Uh, in this recording, I am going to talk about DocETL. Uh, DocETL is a very interesting package. Think about it like the ETL for unstructured data, right? And the description uh, also uh, conveys the same. DocETL is a tool for creating and executing LLM-powered data processing pipelines. It offers a low-code declarative YAML interface to define complex data operations on complex data. And this is what I will show through a demonstration today. And the use case that I used uh, to demonstrate this, or I'll use to demonstrate this, is to um, see how we can extract uh, transcript from YouTube videos and then um, from that transcript, how we can extract what important topics are being discussed in that transcript. Through that use case, we'll see how powerful this uh, package is. Now, DocETL was created by the members of the EPIC Data Lab and Data Systems and Foundations group at UC Berkeley. And the EPIC uh, Lab uh, that focuses on developing low-code and no-code interfaces for data work powered by next generation predictive programming techniques. DocETL is one of the projects that emerged from that research effort, right? And if you, um, it, it's becoming uh, really uh, powerful. Uh, there are a lot of uh, inbuilt operators. There is a map operator, uh, and we'll actually see the map operator today. Resolve operator is for uh, doing entity resolution. A uh, very novel approach uh, towards resolving entities and finding entities from unstructured data. There is a reduce operation, there is a parallel map operation, filter operation, equijoin operation, and clustering operation. There are a few more auxiliary operations and some optimization techniques. Um, I have started exploring this package, and as I explore more, uh, I am going to share uh, more of my findings, uh, but this is something innovative, something useful, I think. If this, if, if we can uh, effectively use this uh, technique, we can marry structured and unstructured data to um, exponentially increase the amount of insights that we can get from data, right? This is very, very powerful. Uh, that's that's what I can say uh, as of now. Um, this DocuTill reminds me of the Hadoop days uh, when um, I remember at that time uh, creating Java programs for finding schema in the unstructured data. We created a lot of uh, text input format, text output format, file out for different formats of files, we created input and output for uh, format, very uh, long codes, very complex codes. The approach is similar instead of code, now prompt and uh, configurations operation, uh, the configuration of the operations are being used to extract the data. So let's see how I have used it today. So I, what I did is, so I uh, have all this, um, YouTube videos, right? So I took one of the videos that I have. Uh, I took the video ID, the YouTube video ID, and I used a package called YouTube Transcript API to extract the transcript from that video, right? Um, so this is um, this is the uh, code, right? Where I uh, get the transcript, uh, which is uh, a, a list of transcripts at different minutes of the video, right? And then I uh, concatenate the all the, the chunks of the transcript from different minutes into a single transcript, uh, create a JSON output of it where transcript is the key and the transcript uh, is the text. Uh, I replaced any, like if there are any apostrophe, uh, right? Uh, replace it with spaces. And finally, I write a uh, transcript file with this, right? So when I execute this, the file will look like this, right? This is a transcript. And this is what I have actually uh, 
spoken in that uh, recording. So it's, I'm going to take up deep dive into, so it was swam. So the transcript was not very good, right? Uh, so this is again, I uh, uh, emphasize a lot, right? The quality of the data needs to be very good for uh, any type of AI, whether it's a generative AI or uh, classical uh, traditional AI, right? Uh, data is the key, right? So here, see it, it missed that R swarm. Uh, so some of these um, things, data pre-processing becomes very important. But here I didn't want to spend much time to uh, pre-process or, or clean the data. Uh, I took the transcript directly out of it, created this file, and now, to extract topics from this uh, transcript, what I did is I created a pipeline underscore two dot YAML. Here I specified, and this is the this is the beauty of uh, this package. Uh, this is a declarative approach of how I want to now process that transcript. Right. So here I'm saying, what is my input? My input, the name of my input, I can give it any time. I said audio transcript. And the path is transcript.json. Since it is uh, on the root, I just gave transcript.json. If you put it in some other directory, you can give um, uh, the relative path or the absolute path here, right? And the type is file, right? So this is my input. I'm saying the default model that you should use to extract the topics from this file is GPT-40 mini. And then I'm saying, declaring the operations that I want to do on this file, right? So I named the operation as extract topics. The type I said is map, right? Map is this, right? This operation is here, right? This is the map operation, right? And I said the output, when you create the output, this is more like the structured output. I have not looked into the doc details internal code, but I'm assuming here underneath, docetl is uh, using a schema based extraction when i give or a structured output type of uh, technique where i'm saying that the output schema should be uh, should follow this right it should have a it should uh, extract the topics uh, which is a data type of uh, list um, of strings right and then the prompt which will be used to extract this uh, topics right yes here i said analyze the following transcript now input dot transcript. Why I say transcript? Because transcript is the key. Transcript is the key for my input, right? That is why I said uh, transcript. Input is, uh, uh, I, I think by default, like when docetl takes it, right? It takes it in a um, with a key called input. And within the input, we have the uh, transcript, right? We, which is uh, this transcript here. And this is the key, right? And then I, I gave the prompt, uh, or then the further part of the prompt is extract and list all. Uh, okay, so I I was also trying something else. This one I'll uh, show it later. I'll say extract and list all key topics mentioned in the transcript. If no topics are mentioned, return an empty list. The PIA part also I'll show it, it as a separate uh, recording where I was actually uh, able to extract PII data from uh, documents with the PII information. But here in this use case, we'll extract and list the uh, key topics mentioned in the transcript, right? Okay, so, so far I have specified my input. I said what operations I want to do and what is the default model I want to uh, use, right? Now comes the pipeline creation. Right. This is what I will be running, right? So in the pipeline, now I mention what are the steps. So right now, this is a single step, right? Only one operations that I mentioned. So that's why I'm saying steps. The name is, uh, okay, so I'll say the operation name. Okay, so the step name is analyze video. I can give the name to the pipeline. Input is audio transcripts, right? This is my input. And the operation that I want to do is extract topics, right? If I had another operation here, let's say another reduce operation here, I could have mentioned that operation also as a separate, but since this is a single operation pipeline, the name is extract topic. This should match this. 
audio transcode input should match this, your input. The name you can give whatever step name you want to uh, give it, right? And then the output, right? So what should be the output of the pipeline? I see the output should be file. Whatever extra topics are created, that should be created in audio audiotopics.json. And there should be uh, the intermediate directory where you should put the intermediate result. What I found out the utility of this is, if I run the first time when uh, I'm, I'm creating this for the first time, uh, it calls a model and creates the topics, right? But if I mention intermediate results, next time, I, if I call it, it directly pulls it from the intermediate results. It doesn't call the call the uh, LLM. I need to see if there is a way to uh, force it to call LLM uh, and not to give it from the intermediate results. Uh, but initially, I was a little um, confused why I'm, like, I was changing something. It was not changing. Then I saw that, okay, uh, second time or third time when I run it, right? It is actually not calling the LLM to get it. It is getting from the intermediate results, right? So this is all that I need to declare as part of this YAML, right? This again reminds me of if you are... Um, Familiar with Qflow, right? It's a Qflow type of uh, uh, framework. Again, that's, that's what I, I feel where in Qflow also you can uh, define your components and then you create a pipeline to stitch the components. Uh, similar approach is, is what I, I see here, right? Now that I have my pipeline.2yaml created, I did a pip install of docktl already. So I can say doc etl run pipeline underscore to YAML, right? When I do this, it is going to ex execute the entire pipeline and give me the output of the topics in the audio topics.json, right? It has run. Let me load for the disk audio topics. Right? So see, it, it actually created uh, the topics that are discussed, although like, some of these topics probably this this can be further tuned. Like I did a very I, I did a bad job with the prompt that I use, right? I could have actually uh I can prompt uh like tune the prompt further, right? To even get better topics out of it, right? So these are the topics that I got from and this is these are something that actually I discussed in, in this recording. If you look at my last recording where I spoke about OpenAI Swarm, um so th these are the discussion uh, that I did. But some of the topics, for example, GitHub is actually not a topic. It was not a important thing that I mentioned in the recording. Streaming is was not important for the recordings. So those things are also coming. But uh, it could be done uh, further, I think, with uh, prompt tuning and all, right? And the intermediate results are stored here, right? So this uh, stores the intermediate results. And what I've seen is like, if I run it next time, uh, it actually doesn't call the model. It will directly give it from the uh, uh, intermediate uh, results. That's uh, that's what I observed, right? So this is uh, pretty um, cool. This is a pretty cool um, framework, I would say, or, or a package. I see a lot of uh, use cases that can leverage it. Um, in my next uh, recording, I'll show one more use case where uh, I took a transcript uh, or I took a content which has a lot of uh, PII data and I was able to use this framework to extract the PII data from that transcript. That's all for this video today. Thank you.